Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're at the Affordable Electronic Repair Workshop with Michael in Sulphur Springs and we uh, have a TV here that has a common arcade problem and, and the reason why we're using a TV today is because one thing is really big and will be easier for us to illustrate. Uh, of course, what would be the difference between a TV and an arcade monitor? Uh, the boards are a little different, but uh... I mean, they had the same problems. They had right. like, like this vertical problem. I'm sure everybody has this a lot on the arcades. Right. And uh, same problem, same fixes. So. Okay. Well, that's again, like I said, this, this common problem that a lot of you guys have wrote in about, you say, man, every time I look at this now, you know, this kind of gets confusing to some people, Michael, so maybe we should explain. This is a vertical collapse, right? Correct. It's a vertical collapse, but a horizontal line. Okay. So if someone says I got a horizontal line, you know that get, that does get confusing. And what it is is everything. The picture originates in the center of the tube. So your vertical brings the picture up this way. Okay. okay. So if your picture is down like this one, it's a vertical problem. And same with your horizontal, it comes out this way. Right. But let's say that if this was in a Pac-Man game, it would be facing like this. Correct. So you'd have a straight line this way. But okay. you have to see where the, the your high voltage cut the anode of the high, the flyback comes in on the tube. That's going to be the top of your tube. We've discussed that before. Okay. So whichever way the line runs from there. So okay. like a Pac-Man, it's on its side. So the line will still be running like this. You know. Okay. So one way to tell what kind of collapse we have is based on where your flyback anode, the suction cup thing, in other words where it is and how the line is in proportion to it will tell us whether it's a vertical or a horizontal collapse. That makes sense. Okay, well then, what we have here is definitely a vertical collapse, right? Correct. Okay, well what kind of things would cause something like this to happen? Well, from if you have a straight line nothing else, more than likely it's going to be the IC itself. Right. Maybe some cold solder ones on the IC. Um, but it's going to be definitely an IC. I don't believe it's going to be a cap issue. Okay. Um, now, there might be some bad caps that made the, the IC fail. Go bad, right. But there's going to be more to this than the caps. Now, if you have um, you have full picture, maybe you have some lines up here like we have in the other videos. Right. That's going to be a cap issue. Or maybe your vertical is, it's called folding, to where you'll see the top half of the picture right here, maybe the bottom half, or it's just mm -hmm. funky looking. That can be a cap. But I've seen a lot of times like it will be just disoriented up at the top right. or something like that. That's where a lot or of times in a Pac-Man, it will be on the sides. On the sides, okay. Like if your left side of your, your Pac-Man or your maze is... Yeah, it'll kind of sway off. That's going to be a side. problem because, again, it's, it's okay. Now, or we'll see, you know, they'll have little streaks sometimes. Those will be a cat. Right. But most of the time when we see this, we're not looking... For it may have been some caps that caused the IC chip Correct. to go back. One of the first things you're going to check is the vertical IC. Nine times out of ten, the cap kit isn't going to fix this. Okay. And so, cap kits, we recommend a lot of times, folks, and they help. And it's, not, it's a good place to start in some areas, but a lot of pictures have some kind of collapse, either the horizontal or the vertical, um, probably not the first place that we need to check. Okay, well let's turn this guy around and, and show us where the vertical IC chip is for this. Okay, Michael, I know the first obstacle that I, I need to overcome is I need to find out where is this IC. Now, when I think of IC, we're talking about an integrated circuit chip. And this is the type of IC that I'm used to, you know, something that, like an EEPROM or something, it doesn't look like that, right? No. Um, the vertical IC is always going to be on a heat sink, and uh, not so much on this actual chassis, but the, the chassis you have separate yoke wires that are not tied into one big plug, but you have separate ones, you draw right. the red and the blue together, and the green and the yellow. The, where the green and the yellow plug in on the board, the, you know, that's it's going to the vertical. Okay. Now, even the ones with the solid plug, you can, you know, find We could trace the traces trace. from it. Trace and it'll eventually take you to that, you know, around the So outside. find the yellow wire, follow the traces around the yellow and green, and that should take us to this vertical you mean IC. It. Okay, and like you said, it'll be on a heat sink, or that's these big metal things that are kind of sticking up like brackets, I call them sometimes. They look like L brackets and stuff 
on top of here. It's called a heat sink, guys, in case you didn't know that. So, um, and we, of course, we've done a lot of videos about the hot and stuff like that. We kind of know what those look like. So, I do notice that this is a little different right here. And uh, if we flip this over on the back, it's got a lot of legs on it. Is that pretty common? That's that common. It, it's, you know, like a hawk might only have three right. or something. So um, this is going to have a lot more legs than a hawk, right? Right. I, in just a little while, I'm, I'll show you the three main uh, vertical ICs that are used in TVs and arcade games both. Okay. And uh, the, the styles of them. And they'll give you an idea of what to look for. Okay. Um, and right where we find the IC at, there's going to be some electrolytics. Um, you can look on the, it's a lot, a lot of times there's some behind the heat sink that it's mounted to also. Okay. And so like, the caps in that area, we want to check you those. Want to check them. Make sure. I remember before you told me, let's say that this is a 601 near there, then a lot of those 600s right. will be, like for instance, this is IC 501. 501 is the IC chip so, number. Right here we have caps, which is C508, C507, C502. You okay. Know, that's in the same circuit. Well, that makes sense. So, you yeah. know, sometimes you wonder where these numbers come from. They do have some some pattern to them, right? Right. And, uh, you know, like I said, caps, you're not. that's not going to be your only problem with a symptom like this. But right. you need to check them because that could have been what knocked the IC out to begin okay. So the caps could have failed. And they, they let the power go through there, and then it hurts the IC, and right. eventually the IC goes out. Right. First thing I would check would be cold for cold, you know, to flip the board up uh, and find, you know, the, the chip on the back side of the board and look at the solder connections. Okay. And uh, they're, you know, it's real common for them to get uh, rings around them and just, you know, when right. the game heats up maybe or all together not work because just from cold solder joints. Right. I notice a lot of times when me and you are working on monitors, you're always touching up the solder joints right. at these places. So before we ever replace it, we need to go ahead and touch up those solder joints. Correct. Okay. Let's get the solder nut out and go ahead and do that. Okay. I know what it looked like on the board, but maybe out here this will be a little bit better, better illustration. Uh, Michael, take us through what some common IC, vertical IC chips would look like. Okay, the, an arcade, especially the newer ones, uh, you'll probably see this style. Um, it's, I say the small style. It's got all the legs. Um, it kind of looks like a normal transistor, um, but with a bunch of legs on it. And it's going to be mounted on a heat sink. And uh, then you have like the medium style, which is the flat. It's more of a flat with a few legs coming down. And then the large style is kind of what we're looking at over there, which has the legs and it's real flat. And that's the three most common that you'll find. They might have different numbers on them, but the style of them are going to look the same. And you can always, these are real easy to cross. Um, a lot of them is going to be a LA. It's going to start out with LA or a TDA and then a number after it. And you can go to any cross-reference and cross-reference to an NTE or, uh, you know, some generic part. And in compar comparisons to the hot, you can see the big the difference. So I hope that helps. Tim, how are you telling well, I did notice here, Michael, that a couple of these were kind of uh, dark in color, like they had gotten really hot or something. Okay. And just from without a microscope or anything, I could see what looked like some gaps and some holes in there. So I went ahead and filled those in with solder and touched up all of them. I know before you taught me that look for areas right. that are kind of dark in color or, you know, ought to be really shiny silver. You know, or at least, you know, look like it's um, pretty pretty fresh, you know, and new. When they start getting really dull and colored and stuff, a lot of times uh, is an indicator that it's been really hot in that area or so forth. And when it gets really hot, that's where the cracks can come in. We're always talking about cold solder joints. Really, they're more like a hot place where they've gotten hot and, and it cracked, right? Right. Okay, so anyway, I've touched all them up. Now... Uh, we talked about this before. There's no real, like, I can't get a meter out to test this thing. So, basically, either I need to uh, to touch up these. If this doesn't work, then I'm just going to have to try to get another one. Just so replace that. It's a good one, to, a good you, part to have keep around. If you have a schematic and you wanted to check to make sure the chip was getting voltage and so forth, you could do that. But, it, you know, it, more than likely it's going to be the chip. And 
which is easy just to replace it and okay. go from there. So, uh, but this one I did notice had some hairline cracks and some uh, some spaces and some burn marks. So let's let's just touch this solder up and see what happens. See how it goes. Well, what do you know? It just happened to be a cold solder joint on this time, so we, we kind of got lucky. But a lot of times, that's what it is, right? That's what it is. Um, so, but we, if, if it wouldn't have worked, we could have replaced the chip. Wouldn't have taken too long. Um, you know, compared to horizontal collapse, though, I mean, you know, how would we fix horizontal collapse? You know, horizontal collapse isn't that often. Uh, a lot of times, it gets mistaken. Vertical collapse gets mistaken for horizontal because, like in Pac Man, you know, it's, it's turned and you have a horizontal line. Or a lot of people will say, you know, see, I have a horizontal line, so I think it's a horizontal problem. Right. And uh, like I said, it's very uncommon for a horizontal collapse because a lot of times if you don't have horizontal sync, you don't even get high voltage. Um, but there are some instances where you can have high voltage and you actually do have a true horizontal line. Okay. And but in this one, again, I thought that was a really good tip you told earlier that the anode of the flyback is right about here where my hand is on top. So it collapsed vertically like this. Right. Right. Okay, so here was the anode up here. So it went kind of opposite, I guess, of the anode, but it well, went vertically. You, you, the anode is the top of the picture, too. Right. Okay, and like I said, the picture, you know, okay, so this it means out in the middle, and it, it comes up this way. Okay. That's why when you have vertical problems, the picture gets littler this way. Okay. Because it's actually coming up this way. And you know, one thing that I've noticed, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong here, Michael, a lot of times it doesn't just happen that quickly. The picture will start, start, mm -hmm. but eventually, I've heard guys talk about, well, I was playing, and then the next day, and then till finally, bam. A lot of times you'll start getting lines, um, and either you don't notice it or they don't fix it, and eventually it, it can just go out once the IC fails. A lot of times with cold solder joints, the pitcher will start doing this. And, you know, maybe after the game warms up, it'll quit. Right. But I see that. After it warms up, it quits. So, in other words, too, though, if I have some bad caps, like we talked about earlier, where it has lines up here, I need to fix that. Right. Because if I don't, it's not just that cap. It could cause a vertical problem. Eventually, it will collapse. Correct. So, we, we need to take care of those small issues before they turn into bigger ones, because it's not that hard to replace one of these chips, but it's a lot easier to replace one cap That's right. than to do this. So, anyway, Michael, thank you again for uh, your knowledge and for sharing that with us. We hope that you guys have learned something today about not only about vertical, but also about horizontal, which is not very common. So, in the horizontal, you could have a lot of other issues that cause that that right. really. You know, it's not like a chip or anything on it, right? No, there's, you know, it's, you know, caps, there's transformers, there's all kinds of different stuff that can cause the horizontal. Collapse. Okay. But so they're not, like I said, they're not very common. It does happen, but not as common as vertical. Okay, so you got a vertical collapse, really check that IC first thing. And then maybe those caps in that area, remember the C501 was the IC, and right. the 500 caps would be a good time to replace all them. Why are you doing that? You know, the best way is to get a schematic and that way you actually can see what goes where. But if you can't can't find one or you know, just that's a good way to do it without one. Just look at the part numbers from the board, location numbers on the board and I'll give you an idea. Alright. Well we want to thank you guys for watching again today and for buying this DVD. And as always, if you have any questions or comments or just so uh, uh, we'd like for you to stay in touch with us. There's plenty of ways that Plenty of opportunities out there to get in touch with us. And uh, again, thank you for watching Arcade Repair Tips video series. Now in high depth.